Flieger, the principal of St. John's School. For those of you, I mean, the ones that I can see, I think I know you all. Uh, but for anyone else, um, we might have some new families too. Um, so thanks for coming to our grade five transition meeting. Uh, this is a meeting we have typically every year um, to talk about the transition for our fifth grade students uh, into the middle school. Um, obviously, usually it's in person. Um, with the weather, we should have had it outside. Like it would have been fun to get outside. Um, our kids have been enjoying the last two days without masks at recess. Uh, so it's been a really nice thing for them. And you're starting to see a transition. So maybe next year we'll be back either in person or outside um, or something. Um, I have a smaller role today. Uh, I'm gonna start off in prayer. Um, and then I'll address a little bit about like thinking around like COVID restrictions stuff going into next year. Um, and I'm gonna pass it over to Mrs. Bowers, who's our grade six homeroom teacher. And so sort of give an overview of all of grade six and then each of the teachers will talk a little bit about their content area. Um, and at the end, we'll leave time for questions, um, you know, anything that you may have. So, but I'll start off in prayer. Uh, this is a prayer for uh, middle school students. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear God, we ask you to protect our children and make them wise. We ask you to pray for our kids to be strong, bold, and courageous, and encourage them to stand tall and stand firm. We pray for our middle school students to grow in grace and in knowledge. Dear God, we ask you to give our children at least one godly friend, one friend who will pull them up. We ask you, God, to protect our kids, to keep them safe no matter where they are, what they are doing, or who they are with. Also, we pray that, that they will not be fearful, timid, or afraid. We also ask you, God, to send teachers, coaches, pastors, and wise older friends into our children's lives. Ask them to be able to talk to other adults and to lead and encourage them for the down to, right, to go down the right paths of their lives. And God, we ask you to speak peace over their hearts and minds, and we ask you to fill them with much joy and teach them to trust in you. Amen. And Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Um, Middle school years, uh, it's, always, it's always a, a fun time as we see our, our students go from grade five to grade six. Um, and there's a lot of growing that they do during this time, um, academically, socially, um, physically. Uh, and it is a wonderful time at St. John's School. I think uh, as a principal, I'm very proud of the amazing job that our middle school teachers do to really put down a quality education for every child that's there. Um, I know that every child is, is deeply loved by all of these teachers, and I think that you may, you probably feel that now in fourth and fifth grade, the middle school teachers just continue that on. Um, I'll talk a little bit about, like, not knowing what next year is going to look like, right? So this is the thing, right? We're, we're seeing all of these changes start to occur in rules and regulations, um, and the plan right now is, you know, we, our plan is to have next year look like this year which would be some cohorts, which would be maintaining distancing, which would be kids possibly in masks. Um, that may change. And if it does, we can sort of loosen up some of the things that we're doing. With that in mind, um, at least uh, to start grade six, our plan is to have them in cohorts. There would be two separate cohorts in grade six. Um, and sort of the, the nice thing is that each child will be part of two different cohorts. So one will be for science and math, and they will be split along the lines of science and math. One will be accelerated, um, and one is on grade level. We do this already. Uh, this is something that we've done at St. John's School for many years, um, where some of the students are the, in the accelerated math and science program, and then some of them are on the on grade level math and science program. John and Christine will talk more about what that actually looks like and maybe how that's determined. But every kid will also be in a second cohort because we want them to be mixing up with other fifth grade kids. Um, so they'll be in a second cohort that they'll be in for the rest of their classes, which would be English, social studies, um, and religion. So when it comes into August, each kid will be assigned to two separate cohorts. I know it's a little bit confusing now. It will make sense. Um, we just want them to be able to be with as many sixth graders as possible. Uh, and our plan right now is to have all specials be whole class. Um, the two cohorts would come together and take music. They would come together and take Spanish guidance um, and a couple other things. You know, it, it's, it's hard to envision what next year is going to look like. Um, but I think the nice thing is if we put in a conservative plan, 
we can always take things away and open things up. It's much easier to open things up when necessary rather than coming up with a plan to close things down. I don't know, I, I'm gonna, I guess if you have questions about the cohort and I can answer them, but otherwise like I'm gonna let everyone talk and then let you ask questions. But I don't know, they're like, is there any specific things that are like COVID related about middle school or about like the actual way we're gonna cohort? And you can also, if you think of them, I can also answer them at the end too. My only question is about the vaccine. Some kids are already 12, right? Or going to be 12. Yep. So how are we gonna handle um, that? I mean, That'll be a Department of Education decision. We'll have to see what the Department of Education does. If the Department of Education mandates vaccines, we will. If the Department of Education does not mandate vaccines, we will not mandate them. So we'll follow whatever the state guidance is. Same as the flu vaccine we had in the fall, like when everyone had to get the flu vaccine, although they got rid of it at the last second, but um, yeah. I was thinking more of a mask decision because- I don't know. Vaccinated. Right now I'd say we're in masks. Again, we will follow what the state guidance is. I think if you've noticed, um, in the beginning of the, as the time has gone on, we're following basically what the Department of Education is saying. So it depends on, it's their decision, whether we're gonna be in masks inside or not. So, I mean, the plan right now, yes, because that's sort of the regulations right now. If the state wants to change that in August, then we'll move in whatever direction the state goes into. Because right now we're looking at three feet distancing and masks, which means we must be in cohorts because we don't have space. If that changes, then we can open things up. I can answer questions at the end too. If they come up about like um, cohorts or uh, other COVID related stuff, I think that's great. But I wanna sort of, you know, traditionally Christine um, or the sixth grade homeroom teacher would typically start this off and talk about that. So I'm gonna let Christine um, start to give you an overview of the middle school program as it, as it Yes. Hello to one and all. I see some familiar faces and names, a lot of new people coming up to middle school. This will be your first time newbies. Um, this is my 17th year of being at St. John's Middle School. Um, and as we always say, it's a family. And that's what I love about it so much. And that's why I know so many people are still here and have sent their children here. Um, sixth grade is definitely a very interesting time. This is going to be that give and take of your children growing up a little bit. One day they're going to be, you know, almost independent functioning human beings and other days they're your little kids again. And it's going to ebb and flow. And obviously they're going to push for more freedom and you've got to, you need to decide what they can handle. It's always that sort of push and pull. You have to know your kid, give them a little bit of room, but we're always there to sort of keep an eye on them. So that's one of the big things. We know sixth graders are not eighth graders. You know, we know where we want them to be and we've got three years to get them there, which is awesome. That also gives us a chance to create great relationships with your kids, not just academically, but on a more personal level to get to know them, to know what they like, what kind of assistance they need, when to push, when to back away. So I think that's an excellent opportunity to have that three-year program. Um, I mean, I'm thrilled. This is like the first year I've been the sixth grade homeroom teacher. I've done a couple of different homerooms, but um, I've loved it to kind of be that entry point for our students. I think that's a great. I am supported by a fantastic group of people. I, I couldn't be more blessed with an amazing group of people to work with, caring, dedicated, intelligent, hardworking. It's amazing. It really is. You're kind of like, you put that in your requirements of what you'd like, you got it. So I, I think we're just, we are blessed and um, blessed to have the families and the support that we've had. Um, in sixth grade, when it comes to science, it is an integrated program. They will learn a variety of topics of science. What we really strive for as we go through middle school is to dive deeper, you know, not just learning the vocab, getting into the connections, the relationships, learning how to make a statement, a claim, defend it, try to apply what we're learning into real life settings and activities as much as possible. Um, really extend beyond the book, beyond, you know, whatever specific curriculum. Our curriculum is aligned with Massachusetts curriculum standards. Um, I am one of those people that are always looking to add new ideas, new programs, new ways of teaching. If what isn't working, I change. You know, even if it's the middle of the year, I want to make sure the kids are getting what they need. I try to work with what's best for them, as we all do. Um, let's see, I always write my notes down to make sure. Um, 
I think when we come to the differentiation uh, of the two groups, the accelerated group and the on grade group, one of the things I want to assure you is that whatever group your child may be in, they will be prepared for high school. They will be prepared. How it looks with science is a little bit different than math, but in science, it, the accelerated group is, I would say, a little bit more independent. I'm a little bit more of a facilitator and guide, and they will definitely be expected to write more, go deeper, work at either a faster pace or deeper pace, depending on the topic we're learning. Um, the uh, on-grade level group, they will learn everything they need to learn, but I will be a little more direct teaching, a little bit more going through each step with them. Um, they will certainly expect it to write, but the detail, the depth would be appropriate to what would be an on grade level group. Um, um, you know, I'm excited to continue this middle school journey. And I think the fact that the fourth and fifth grade is sort of like a, you know, middle school preview, preview set up this year with the departmentalized and the moving around. I think these children are going to be probably even more prepared and used to the different expectations and the different teachers than any group we've ever had. So I think they're in an awesome position. They're well prepared. So I'm excited to have them join us. I know if we are going to be in cohorts, so this is a good segue for me, um, Mr. Patrick Brooks will be the other sixth grade homeroom teacher if we are continuing in cohorts. And he's also our so, so, uh, social studies and theology teacher. So I think I'll send it over to Patrick. So good evening, everybody. I am uh, Patrick Brooks, as Mrs. Bauer said. Um, I am our social studies and theology teacher. It is uh, wonderful being able to speak with you uh, this evening, and I really appreciate all of you guys taking the time uh, to be with us here. Um, to start out, I will be the other sixth grade homeroom teacher, um, as Mrs. Bauer said. So basically, the classes will be split, and we'll, we'll each take a, roughly half um, in the mornings, uh, we'll do the typical homeroom um, kind of setup, just like the students are used to now. Um, additionally, I will uh, not be doing sixth grade theology this year. That's actually uh, Mrs. Palmer who'll be doing that, but I still will be covering the sixth grade social studies uh, program where uh, we do work out of the McGraw-Hill textbook, but just like Mrs. Bauer said, I kind of try to get into the, the deeper meaning um, of having a historical context in the way that we view the world. Um, the connections between different cultures are very historical in nature. Um, it's really important to kind of uh, really examine them uh, and talk about the benefits that come about when people interact with one another um, and the connections that are made there. Uh, my goal is to get students to critically think about the material, uh, to examine information um, and kind of create their own questions and um, kind of find um, you know, new meanings in the material uh, as well. I do use a lot of uh, online materials as well, uh, depending on kind of what happens with COVID as well uh, and the restrictions, I might go and do a little bit more in print form this year, uh, upcoming year than I did last year. Uh, but for now, I tend to use a lot of online resources. Um, I also do like switching things up uh, and varying things as needed. Um, if something's not working, I definitely like changing it up. Um, it's also uh, really interesting when we can take current events and bring them into the social studies classroom as well, uh, just to kind of gain a broader understanding of the world around us and how all of the events of the past impact us today. Um, my class format is, I would say, pretty standard uh, for, for your typical social studies class. Um, we go lesson by lesson through our textbook, uh, and then there's usually, it's usually interspersed with quizzes, and then the end of a unit, we usually either have some sort of a pro project or writing assignment or test. Um, beyond that, I would say, uh, as far as the curriculum goes, I really like having students have a voice in the classroom. Um, I, like, I really like seeing student participation and, and a goal of mine is to really help every student feel comfortable uh, contributing in the classroom and, and feeling as though they can take risks and potentially uh, get a question wrong and learn from that and ask questions uh, if there's something they're not clear on. And I kind of, at the beginning of the year especially, um, I really like cultivating that space um, and letting students kind of 
gain a little bit more of that independence, as Mrs. Bowers was saying, and, and learn how to be assertive in a classroom. Um, so I can't wait to get started. Um, I've heard amazing things about this group, and um, I'm really excited uh, to start teaching them. So thank you all for sending them to St. John's, and um, it's going to be amazing getting to work with each of them. And uh, you know, I really appreciate uh, the fact that uh, you all have provided me the opportunity to do that. So thank you very much. All right, Mr. Hall, you ready? We'll jump into we'll jump into math. John can talk about that. Um, hi, everybody. It's good. <laughs> Great learning. Uh, I've met a lot of your children. Uh, a lot of. Can you ever hear me? I guess am I broken? Uh, sometimes it's uh, sometimes the internet connection is not the best. Great meeting a lot of the fifth grade. Uh, I, I deal with them and looking at all their map scores and stuff. And um, they're a they're a lively group to come up. They're going to be fun to teach from a Mac curriculum. I'm going to take them from sixth grade math all the way to algebra one. Um, get them prepared, uh, you know. And I think Christine focus is to take them you know they're 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 still young uh even in sixth grade um and, and getting them i'm i'm just uh, finished a retreat with our eighth graders um i don't think i could be any prouder of them they uh, they had a great retreat uh, a lot of things that they learned here um some of them here 10 years um so it was good to see today uh, so i had a good day with that um, and every year we look down and they, I do it all the time, you know, I and mean, I interact with them quite a bit just to kind of start feeling them out. Um, I think they're going to be a great group. Um, again, uh, we've got a, all your children ready for whatever high school they want to go to. Um, good Lord, uh, I was talking to Chris and, you know, we've got kids going to Nobles and St. Seb's and. I think we have a, a good a good rigor, um, and the and the kids the kids eat it up. It, you see them watching watching grow, uh, learning grow at the same time. Um, it is rig rigorous. I talk to a lot of kids that leave here. Uh, it, it's a they're well, um, and it's fun. I just listen to. I always check in with all the kids that are leaving uh, high school. So this year's high school kids are going to uh, Georgetown for college for baseball. It's just interesting to watch uh, where our, our kids are going. Um, so we must be doing something right. Um, I think we really do have a good recipe here. It's through, it's, it's an interesting time. I've noticed in this middle school, it's different than high school. It's different than elementary. Um, it's a it's time for these kids. And, I think we have a good recipe for it. I think we, we're doing a good job. I, and again, that's me saying it. Um, but I'm looking out at all these kids that are leaving and going off great schools, um, and they're and they're succeeding. So we have to have something something going on, right? Um, I think that's all I really have. So one of the things I'll jump in here just for a second about like the math and science split. That's a question that comes up a lot of times. And Christine and John put in a lot of time and effort into splitting these classes up. Um, they're looking at teacher recommendations from grade five. They're looking at grades in grade five. They're looking at map scores in grade five. And they're particularly looking at effort. Um, so it has to be both. The accelerated classes move fast. Um, and in Christine's class, like I tell everybody, it goes deeper. And then in John's class, it actually starts to change content. Like at a certain point, it really does diverge and they become two classes. There is the ability to move up from the on grade level to the accelerated to about beginning of grade seven. So it'll be about the last time they'll be able to do it because then the content starts to uh, diverge a little bit too much. But they do put a lot of effort into that. Um, and we do put a lot of data. So I think that kind of talks about that. Um, I'll let uh, Tara go next. Mrs. Frost. Uh, evening, everyone. Um, so I'm the seventh grade homeroom teacher, and I'm also the English and English literature teacher. And with sixth grade, it's going to be a little bit different next year. So Mrs. Palmer is going to be teaching the English aspect of it, uh, and I will be teaching the literature. 
aspect. So with English, students are going to learn, it's going to be very grammar based. So they're going to learn about their or revise their knowledge of, you know, adjectives, adverbs, um, nouns, pronouns, they're going to look at sentence structures and the breakdown of sentences and punctuation. They'll also be doing quite a lot of creative writing with that as well. One thing that worked really well this year with the current sixth grade class are very quick snapshots where students have a variety of images. They choose an image and they start describing what they see. Um, we talk a lot about thinking outside of the box. So not just describing one particular image, but breaking it down even more or being an object in that image. And students really get engaged with it and they like to start writing a lot more in the first person than in the third person. So we break down what the first person, the second person and the third person is. With the English aspect as well, students will do a lot of self-assessing based on the success criteria. So we break down the success criteria and once they get confident with the success criteria, then what we do is we start to peer assess and we look at specific aspects of the criteria where students are critical bodies and they look for things that went well in that writing piece and things that need to be improved. And from there, students will go through the redrafting process. And it's a real opportunity for students to kind of expand on what they already know with English and build up their confidence with trying to discuss areas where they need to improve. And students really like that. We do the WWW EBI, so what went well, and even better if. Um, for the literature aspect, we do a lot of nonfiction and a little bit of fiction as well. And we read, we're reading, we will read, sorry, um, Private Peaceful by Michael Moore Pogo, which went down uh, really well with the current sixth grade class. We look at um, different forms of writing. So we look at plays, we look at the narrative. We actually started Shakespeare a few weeks ago. So we're looking at, uh, we're reading Hamlet, but we're reading a kid's version. So Shakespeare's being introduced at sixth grade, at the sixth grade level. And then in seventh and eighth grade, seventh grade, they'll read Macbeth the play and in eighth grade they will read Romeo and Juliet. Um, also with that we look at different forms of writing so students go away they create a play they learn how to write diary entries or journal entries particularly during World War One. so we do a lot of that work around private peaceful. We also look at creating leaflets and brochures we look at that with some of the work that we read and also newspaper articles. So they get all different forms of writing, which will carry on into seventh and eighth grade as well. And then there's the opportunity at lunch times at the moment for book club and writing club. For, so for our aspiring writers, um, we have a writing club where we look at writing short stories or just getting our thoughts down on paper. This year, we had an author from England um, speak to students who is, he's just written his second book. So we spoke to students um, about the writing process and it was a question and answer session for them. And they really enjoyed that. And then reading club is solely based on the students' suggestions for books that they would like to read. Um, we put all the blurbs together like a regular book club <clears throat> and they choose a book and it see every two months we start a new book. So some students might wanna join the first book and then leave the second book out and go to the third book. And it's really engaged some of our students um, and they lead the discussion. So I kind of sit back, I read the book. So they're assigned to however many chapters a week. And then we come back together and we discuss it and it's all student led, which is the great part. So it's really nice to kind of see them more engaged in, in reading, which is really nice to see as well. They will have a summer reading book. I just haven't chosen that one yet. So there'll be more information on that to follow. Um, and they'll also have vocabulary once a week with me as well. So it's words that sixth grade students should know and also preparing them for eighth grade, um, the SSATs, the HSPTs and the SATs for when they get older. So 
that, that's English in a nutshell, really. Awesome, thank you. Um, this year, our next year is gonna be a bit different. Uh, Mrs. Palmer will be joining the uh, middle school team, not just as a music teacher, but also doing some religion and part of ELA. Um, I won't put her on the spot too much to talk about content because that's sort of her, what she's going to be doing over the summer. Uh, but I'll let her say hi. Really, when you think about the sixth grade religion curriculum, it's very Christocentric. It's very much about Jesus and his role um, in the scriptures and how we can sort of follow him in our life, which I love the sixth grade curriculum because it's very much about we, what we talk about um, every day. But I'll let Mrs. Palmer sort of say hello. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm very excited to join the middle school team this year. Um, it will be my 10th year at St. John's, so time flies. And I went to middle school, so I think here. So I think that should be super interesting to be back in my, my hometown, my home spot. So it's been so fun to work with these fifth grade students um, just in music for the past, you know, however many years they've been here. Um, I'm excited to work with both Tara and Patrick over the summer to get the curriculum going. So we're all going to be excited in September. Awesome. Um, our last academic teacher in the middle school um, is Senora Sobo. So when students get to middle school, one of the big shifts is they start to take Spanish um, twice a week. Uh, so it does become, instead of a typical special, it actually becomes an academic course, they get a grade in it, um, and it becomes a little more rigorous. So I'll let uh, Senora talk a little bit. Hola, todos. Can you hear me? Hola. Our internet at my house has been awful today, so I apologize. Um, so as Dr. Flieger said, the gen normally, um, the move to from fifth to sixth grade, the biggest change is that I will meet with them twice a week instead of only once, and that they will start to uh, receive a grade, a not, um, percentage grade instead of, um, I don't remember, a satisfactory, whatever. In any event, um, so that's typically the biggest change. The other big change this year is that um, I'll be meeting with them in person, which I'm, I personally am very excited about. Um, this year has been a little tricky with all the Zoom situations and um, trying to figure out being inside, outside, one room to the other, et cetera. Um, so next year, um, it looks like we'll be able to meet all together at one time, um, which uh, will enable them to and me, it'll just make interaction easier. They'll be able to speak more and do more interactive speaking activities, and um, um, it'll just be more fun, frankly. <laughs> so I'm excited about that. Um, I hope that they are too. Um, they've been great. It's been a tricky year in a lot of ways, and they've been troopers. Um, so we'll move into a more structured curriculum. Um, so it will be more challenging, um, but. Um, I, I try to make it as fun as I can and do um, games. You know, we, again, we can't probably move around so much yet, but uh, we'll see how things go. And um, I look forward to seeing them in person because the little postage stamp on the computer screen is is not as fun as a, a smiling face in front of me. So um, anyway, if you have any questions, please feel free to send, shoot me an email. Um, and I look forward to seeing them all next year. The good news is that I've had most of them. So um, I, I actually know your kids um, and hopefully that will make their transition to the middle school a little bit easier. I think it, it, this year at St. John's School, one of the, I mean, every teacher has worked very hard, but the specialists has been extremely difficult because they sort of lost their space, right? And they've had to be in the gym, they've had to be in classrooms, they've had to Zoom in some of them just because we haven't had the space. Um, and it'll be nice to in middle school uh, to New York getting back to the kids. Um, we do have one other member of the middle school team. So Mrs. Fleming, uh, Mrs. Fleming is our guidance counselor. Uh, she also will be teaching a guidance class, um, but she does a lot more than that. So I'll let her talk to you. Hi, I'm Cheryl Fleming. So similar to Mrs. Palmer, this will be my 10th year coming up and I've worked with most of your students, so our, your kids already, so it's been great. And, you know, like Dr. Flieger said, I will continue to support them socially, emotionally, academically. I know them very well, so 
you know, I'll help the middle school teachers knowing about, you know, transition. You know, I work closely with the middle school team, but especially in the fall for sixth graders because I've worked with them for many years and worked with all the younger teachers so I can help them that. And then one of the biggest changes is I have guidance class. It's not graded, but we work on second step and some other social emotional kind of skills, organization, things like that, that can help them. And then I'm with them for the guidance, sixth, seventh, and eighth. And then I help them with their transitions if they go to a Catholic or a private high school and do those things. So looking forward to it. So in a normal uh, sort of grade five transition, we would be walking you around, right? You'd be able to get to see the classrooms because in my, one of my first or second years here, I never realized like we would have these transition days and parents were like, I've never seen the middle school. Like I've never actually been on the third floor. Um, so a normal one, you get to be here. Um, you know, hopefully next year, parents can come in more. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, the two other things I'll mention and then sort of let you know, open up for questions. One is we will be doing some type of grade six um, uh, day before school starts. So we typically bring them in before the first day of school for like a half day. Um, and we'll walk through their schedule. We'll have them get their lockers set up. Uh, so that would probably be on looking at the calendar. That'll probably be August 31st. So they'll come in for a half day um, in the morning. We'll give them some food and then they'll kind of walk through the count for the schedule. So they're ready to go actually on the first day of school, which is great. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is I think that what we've done over the past few years at St. John's schools, we've tried to make the transition from fifth to sixth grade smoother. And I think that Christine mentioned it. I think this will be the smoothest transition we've seen um, because grade four and five are so um, subject based now, right? And I think that them transitioning to this will actually be a great thing. Um, at St. John's school now, actually the transition from third to fourth grade is actually the biggest transition now as opposed to fifth to sixth. Um, and that's why we're having a grade three transition night for the first time this year. So I won't see all about grade three families. Um, but other than that, I think that, you know, I was looking at the list. I think there's eight of you that have experience in the middle school before, but that leaves that the vast majority, two thirds of you don't. Um, so it's brand new. Um, it's a brand new thing. Um, I love it. If you haven't up there, uh, it changes color. Um, the walls do. So it goes to a nice maroon color. Um, up there. We want the kids to think that they're special, that they're leaders of the school, and hopefully next year more opportunities open up for them to be leaders um, and to do service uh, and to be active participants um, in the school. Uh, other than that, I mean, I think you, you have a wonderful team of educators uh, that are going to take your children. They're going to help them grow. They're going to push them. They're going to love them. Um, not every day is going to be easy. They're going to struggle, um, but I think that you have a lot of people here who are just here to support them and move them forward. Um, I'm gonna, actually I'll ask one question to the teachers and then I'm gonna go to the parents. So like if there, if you could offer advice, any advice, a teacher, so any of you out there, if you could offer advice to an incoming sixth grade parent, you got any advice you'd like to offer them? I would, I would probably say, as you said, you know, you're going to have your highs and lows, you know, between the fact that it's, new and they're, you know, getting that lovely beginning dose of hormones, as we know, as they change, you know, you know, obviously we will be there to support you, but kind of see where you're going. Is it a bad day or is it a pattern? And we are there to help you out. I think really kind of getting to the root of what might be going on in a given day, you know, sometimes, you know, they're so, they get so emotional and they go move on so fast. You know, we're still worried about them and we want to help them. So I think it's the idea is take it one day at a time. If you see something that you see a pattern of concerns, whether it's academically, emotionally, socially, please let us know. You know what I mean? We want to support them, but we know they're going to have those ups and downs day to day. I know, you know, as these lovely years progress, but we're going to get them through. We've all been through them, so we'll get them through. But yeah, deep breaths, count to 10. <laughs> yes. Nora, you're up. I have I have a thought. Um, so, uh, so I have a child in high school and one in college, and I, I guess I would encourage parents to help your students become as independent as possible. Um, it feels really hard to let go and to let them fail, but the sooner they do, the sooner they will become 
they will learn how to be successful on their own, to advocate for themselves, um, and and to be independent learners and and speak up, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really hard. I'm not very good at it myself. I can tell you to uh, let go and let them figure it out. Um, but the sooner you do that, the better it is for them and for you, honestly. Um, but for everyone, it's uh, it's a it's it's a tricky transition. But um, that would be my suggestion. And I'll follow that right up. You know, Megan, uh, that's that's true. That was one of my points was self advocacy. Advocacy. Um, it's a skill that gets learned. Um, and hopefully, like I said, we as we work through these middle school years, this is the years to do it. Um, not in high school. You need to have those tools ready for you by the time you get to high school. And we do a nice job of, of uh, giving them opportunities to self-advocate for themselves and show them successfully how to self-advocate for themselves. Um, my other one for the parents is um, learn RenWeb. Learn how to, you know, if you haven't done RenWeb before, um, you're going to get lots of updates. And, you know, that's one way to keep up on the kids if they're not actually telling you about it. Uh, that's one way to keep up with them is on RenWeb. Because that's probably the biggest thing change you're going to see coming into middle school is we use RenWeb a lot. You get notices at least every Sunday. You get a progress report, uh, missing homeworks. You'll get those nightly uh, if they're missing homework. So uh, it's also it's a key. It's one of our key ways to communicate. Um, so those are my two two things. Following up Megan with self advocacy and and, and RenWeb. else or we can move on to parent questions all right so i'm just gonna open up the floor i mean we have we have some time oh go ahead somebody all right um so i'll open up uh, so we do have any questions if you have a question for um one of the teachers for me i mean feel free it could be a content question it could be a transition question it could be uh Anything. I mean, you got all the teachers here. It's a good opportunity. If you have a question, probably somebody else has the same question. So I learned that long ago. So just ask questions. But anybody can jump in. Hi, I have a question real quick. And I might have missed it from the beginning. I was here about five minutes late, but I don't know if you do any kind of health or development classes at this point. You know, you start talking about changing and all that stuff. I just didn't know whether that was part of some of what you're doing this year? No, not necessarily. I think some of that may fall into some of the second step and the guidance. Um, and Mr. Medeiros is around as a, as a resource for the kids. It's not necessarily any pieces of the curriculum. Um, you know, what we do every year is if we feel like we need to touch on some of these pieces, that may fall into sort of a guidance class. Um, and then Mr. Medeiros is also there to sort of help in any way. But that's, it's not necessarily, like we don't have, I think years ago, we used to have a, did we, this is uh, St. James years ago, we used to teach something, but we sort of- That was a help. When we used to have an eight period schedule, there was a little more time. Yeah, we have seven periods, yes. A couple of years ago, we shifted and we went from, we extended class periods, which caused a couple of things like extensions and help to sort of fall out of it. Good. But there are resources out there. Mrs. Medeiros, most of you know her, is an amazing nurse um, and a great support. And Mrs. Fleming as well. Um, when did I find out what cohort they're in they won't find that out till august yeah I, that'll be very very late okay yeah i mean we're gonna we have some drafts available but for me there's no, <laughs> no reason to give those out yet <laughs> i have a question um is there a, is there a recess period for sixth graders do they have time to get outside are they same, as, uh, same as elementary um oh, they have the same 15 minutes um so they'll have and it's just sometimes a little bit longer. It's middle school, sometimes they'll let them out a little early. Um, but typically they have a 15 minutes to eat, 15 minutes to go outside. Um, depending on who you have on duty, they'll let them go out a little bit earlier. But And they typically, this year again with COVID, they've had little spaces they go to, but typically the uh, playground's available in the black top and the grass. That was Mary's number one question when I told her I was having this meeting this evening. <laughs> and we, and we, I gotta get, we, we didn't used to have, we didn't a couple years ago. I don't think they had recess. And I never understood that. So I'm glad we put that back in. And they do have a snack break period in the morning after usually their second period for about 15 minutes, snack, socialize. So they have a break in the morning as well. Yeah. yeah. All of Mary's concerns has been answered. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. We're good. Yeah, <laughs> She's good. She'll be there in the fall. <laughs>
I will also do probably some sort of back to school night, obviously. So some of the questions you may not think of until you're in the thick of it in the fall. So some of those may come up as well when we are meeting in, you know, mid late September again. That's usually when the questions come up when you're actually in it, you know. <laughs> From Mr. Hall. Can, sure. can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Um, in sixth grade, is the curriculum more like a common core or, you know, the type of math that was before common core? I didn't, under, I didn't understand the question. So, so I think the um, question is about what, what does the math look like, like common core base, like exactly. what do you, maybe, so what do you actually like, maybe some of the content. We I, follow the, uh, for common core, you know, I, the, people hate the words common core. Um, we follow their common core curriculum, not their technique of teaching. Um, I'm still a very uh, traditional math teacher. You need to know your multiplication table. One of the things is summer work. You'll have extra math to do um, on multiplication tables. Um, uh, it's just a really strong foundation in that. Um, but I teach more in the way high school teaches than elementary teaches. So it doesn't really follow the common course techniques of teaching, uh, but it does follow uh, what you need to get taught in each grade. Six, seven, eight. Yeah, sounds great. Thank you. Hi, um, Dr. Fliega. I think that you had said something about accelerated um, pathways for next year yep. for the kids um, for ELA or math. Um, how does how do they get into that? The so that, that's for math and science. There's an accelerated math and science and on grade level math and science. And really, um, it's based on test scores, grades, teacher recommendations. Like I mentioned, effort is a big piece. Mm -hmm. um, so like they got to want to work. Like it really is. I mean, there, there's homework up here. We still, so homework is always an interesting discussion point. Um, I am still a believer in homework, but I'm a believer in good homework, right? Good homework that either extends the learning or introduces new things, not that is repetitive. Um, so they have to be able to work. So if they're going to put the effort in. So I think that John and Christine will take a look at, they, did their, they have the maps course from this year. They have the grades will come out. They'll talk to Angela in particular, but also um, Brianna Sullivan, um, who did science. Um, and they're going to ask, like, does this student work hard? Um, are they going to put effort in? And then they'll sort of craft those um, math and science cohorts probably will be a bit uneven. Um, we, we, we don't make them even. We, make, we put the kids in accelerated who should be in accelerated. And if that means that there's more, that's great. If that means that there's less, that's perfectly fine, too. And um, sorry, Chris, when do you find out about that? Is that the same time as you find out about the cohorts, like late August? Yeah, it'll be late August, pretty much. Yeah, because really, at the beginning of sixth grade, the content is the same. It starts to diverge a little bit later, particularly with math. I think, like, I don't know, John, when does is it more seventh grade where it diverges? When's the content start to change? The content changes um, right at the beginning of seventh grade. So yeah. they have a whole year to develop. And what and don't get, you know, I tell the parents not to panic. They have a whole year to develop. You know. Um, if it's they're not ready for it in sixth grade, you know, at the beginning of sixth grade, they have a whole year to prove themselves that they're ready for it. Um, I always tell kids, I, I mean, I don't want to put you in the accelerator group. It's like throwing you at the end of a deep end of a pool that you, you haven't learned how to swim yet. Uh, it's a lot to handle. Um, I really, really, the biggest thing you get out of middle school math is foundation. If you know how the, the math works, in a very foundation uh, oriented way, you can go on to any advanced mathematics. I've had lots of kids. And again, I keep in touch with a lot of high school kids. They were in my lower group or my on grade group. And they went on to do honors geometry. They come back and like, oh, Mr. Paul, I just did AP calculus. And you're like, wow, you've come a long way. Um, that's why I'm saying, you know, don't get hung up that they're not in the accelerated group. Um, it, just know that they're getting a strong foundation where when they get to high school, they can go anywhere they want. Well, I think this year, even in, so grade seven, at the end of this year, we moved up, I want to say at least three kids, like at least three, right? So three at the beginning of seventh grade moved from on grade level to accelerated. But there is also the opportunity. I think last year we realized that within the first month, somebody can move down if it's just, if it's a bit much. So we have the ability to do that. Um, yeah. And we're looking at the end of this year, we, we have an eye on, 
a couple students that really have, have really matured mathematics and in science um, that yeah. we're going to invite. And again, it's an invitation. You don't have to move up. If you don't think, if your child is busy doing a lot of other things that rounds them out and putting them in an accelerated group is just going to overtax them and bring their anxiety up, leave them in the lower group. Um, again, we've seen that too. Um, again, there's a lot of choices along the way. And we've got a lot of discussions for each child. Everybody's a little different. And our on, on grade group, we hear from a lot of students and families that that's often advanced in other places. Right. So it is not lower. I mean, you know, I mean, you, you often hear that what we're considering on grade level is above what a lot of, I know I had a lot of talks with students who were new to our school this year and they were talking about what, how they did things in the past and they were like blown away, you know, and it, it ate it up what we were giving them. And we also do look at, particularly after first term, the first couple of months, if we think somebody has been not in, has not really been in the best place, you know, cause we actually see them in front of us, we make adjustments, you know, it's not a revolving door by any means, but we make appropriate adjustments as needed, you know. Other questions or thoughts or comments? Very quiet. I can hear the birds chirping outside, which means it's like silent here. So I can only say Trisha is excited to go to the third floor. <laughs> She's looking forward to that. It's always a fun transition up. Yeah. Well, and this year has been interesting because some of your children have been on that corner room on the third floor because it's been different. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. There's also air conditioning on the third floor. Oh, so, I mean, that's a big thing. That is. And yeah. I'd also say that most of the kids wear um, sweatshirts, though. So, that's just so they don't have to wear belts. Purchase those. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about the air conditioning. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. It's on, right it. it's on right now. It feels good. <laughs> How's Tristan doing? Who was that? Is Tristan? Is that Tristan's mom? Yeah. How's Tristan doing? He's going great, thank you. Excellent. I always say when it comes to the middle school, we're a good combination of a pat on the back and kind of a little boot in the patootie to get them going. It's that even handed of those two things is what we are. You know what I mean? I think that's a good way to say it. You know what I mean? We wanna, you know, it is challenge, but love them. Exactly. You will tell Tr um, Trisha, it's no joke. It's different. Yeah, yeah, no. And I talk to the sixth graders every year and I say, so, you know, how did you feel about the transition? Was it nearly as bad as you thought it was? And I'd say nine times out of 10, they're like, nope, it was not nearly as bad as we thought it was going to be. You know, as long as you were, and I say advice, work hard, do your homework, ask for help if you need it. You know, that's what they always seem to say every year at the end. You know, that's, you, those are kind of the guiding principles. Yeah. All right, last chance. Any other questions? Then, I mean, you can, again, anyone feel free to email me, any of the teachers, um, if questions come up. Um, I do uh, have one question, if I could. Yeah, sure. Um, so on extra help, just, you know, going back to when Noah was there, is it still kind of the same? They reach out, you know, they advocate for themselves and say, hey, um, I need some help in this area. Do they get it like they did before, before or after school? Is it still the same? Or at lunch. I think it depends on the teacher. I think whenever people are available, it works into the schedule. We'll fit them in. Awesome. Okay. I great. love I love early mornings, but you know Me these too. kids are also jam packed. Well, you're here at six o'clock every morning, so. Well, they don't want to come at six. I offer it. You know, they don't want to come. I that remember early. those early mornings. Believe me. I was um, like, wait, what? <laughs> I'll have Sean there at five thirty if you're there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure well, Sean will want to hear that. Well, it's funny. So hey. I get here, and the two people that are here before me just about every day are John and Christine. It's that I see their cars. John's here first, and then Christine's pulling in. So it's um, yeah. We're here. old. No, skin because we're old. <laughs> Any 
And I think when you get to middle school too, I'll add it on, there's other opportunities that start to emerge from these kids. Um, you know, halfway through middle school, they can join the National Junior Honor Society. Um, and as you move into seventh grade, we have an ambassador program. Uh, we really want, you know, that we've talked a lot about self-advocacy, but we also really want to have these students develop into leaders. Uh, we want them to hone their leadership skills here so that when they leave, um, they're confident young men and women that, um, you know, are going to change the world. I think as I said that last year at graduation, um, it's kind of cool to think about that. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, um, we'll let you go. Have a nice day.